All right, we got another anonymous participant. Here we go. All right, need help. My divorce decree states that I get my son during my ex-wife's 48-hour work schedule. She works 48 hours on and 96 hours off, and I get him first, third, and fifth weekend. It ends up being about 50-50. She has to furnish her schedule, her work schedule 30 days in advance, which she did, but she had surgery Friday and messaged me and told me I would not be getting him. She took off Tuesday and Wednesday. Our papers state that she has to give me a 14-day notice of taking PTO for her to get him. She said she just requested off and didn't have 14 days to give. I am to pick up our son from school tomorrow, and she's stating she isn't going to allow me to have him. But it clearly states in the papers he's mine. It's not my fault she didn't have 14 days to give, and she's saying her schedule changed this past Friday, which is still not a 30-day notice of her work schedule. What do I need to do? Great question. So this comes up a lot. This is a very customized possession schedule. And the issue he's got is that she's like unilaterally changing mm -hmm. stuff on him. So I would need to read his divorce decree. I can't just take his word and say that it clearly states it in the papers because a lot of times what they think is clearly stated is not and right. doesn't meet a lot of, of the different legal standards that need to be met. So I would have to read that. And then especially an agreement like this, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you have an attorney that has written this and a, a good experienced attorney, because I know to put in additional language, mm -hmm. such as things like failure to provide the 14 day notice means that she forfeits the ability to take that time. Right. Because what she's saying is if, is you can only have them when I'm at work and I dictate that based on my work schedule. Whereas that's not exactly fair. That's why he's allowed to have the 14 day notice. So he knows when that's going to happen. And the fact that she didn't provide the 14 day notice should mean, and if I had written it would mean representing him, it would mean that he would have the right to the possession. An attorney that responded to this that said, you know, call the cops and show them the possession schedule. They probably won't do anything about it, mm -hmm. but at least you can make a report. Yes, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is you've got the, the information and communication back and forth. He technically has to show up to pick up the kids at the time he's supposed to and at the location that he's supposed to. Mm -hmm. His decree has to state a specific location and a specific ascertainable time with which that he has to pick up the child. And, and he should document it too by like taking a picture or something that's time stamped. Exactly. That states that he was there to pick up the exactly. child. Exactly. I would even say to take a video of him being there and then the communications and a mm -hmm. communication to her that he's there attempt to make a phone call to her in the state of Texas. I know this is going out on the internet not, and it's going all over the world. And this rule is only for the state of Texas. You can record a telephone conversation that you are a member, a, a party speaking of. If you call someone from Texas in Texas, you can record that conversation and he should do that. How can he do that? You know, and have a video. Maybe he has another phone or something or somebody, mm -hmm. a friend that films him trying to make the call and can, he can record what they say, what she's saying. And if she's saying this and this is what the deal is now, he's got the evidence to show. But then the question is, is with this complicated decree, who is? responsible when are you supposed to do it right. and do you need the language fixed or is it enforceable under this called a slavin s-l-a-v-i-n there's a case that tells that it has to have certain things in it in order for it to be enforceable mm -hmm. and then the it boils down to is there an ascertainable standard that you can determine and if there is then her failure to turn over the child could be subject to contempt and she could be subject to having to pay his attorney's fees and she could be subject to uh, going to jail for failure to follow the possession order. So it sounds like to me, she must have like a set schedule. He technically usually gets his son Tuesdays and Wednesdays because he's saying here that she has a 48 hour work schedule and then she's off 96 hours. Usually what happens in these is that the month to month, a lot of times there'll be similarity, but there'll be some variation. That's why she's required to give him the schedule when she gets it, mm -hmm. which is 30 days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of these type of things and they can yeah. work really well, but it has to be an ascertainable thing. And so once you give that 30 day notice, then he knows what his schedule is going to be. And if she's supposed to give him 14 days notice of taking paid time off 
and she wants the kids during that time, then fine. Then that's what the rules say. And she'll have the kids if she gave them the 14 day notice and mm -hmm. she's taking paid time off. That's so that she can because and probably what happens is, is she goes, well, 30 days out. I don't know that I get the day off. I only get approval maybe 14 days. There can be yeah. different circumstances where she won't know and therefore she'll never be able to take paid time off to go on a vacation or this or that. But the fact that she had surgery and it's just for her convenience and she didn't give them notice, that's not his fault. She doesn't get to take yeah. his time for that. Well, and everybody knows when you plan a surgery, those are usually planned out pretty in advance, unless it's an emergency surgery. And the point of that is, is that there's no... And if no, it was an emergency surgery, wouldn't he have possession of the child during her surgery? That's exactly what I thought. That's exactly <laughs> yes. what I thought. So I, my head's going, well, maybe she allowed him to have the child while she was going through the procedure. And now she's like, well, no, you had him during this period. So now I want him while I'm off. Yeah. You know, and that's exactly where my brain so went my, What I'm thinking is that for something like this, mm -hmm. this guy needs to contact an attorney, have a consultation. We could figure out exactly what he wants to do. And, and even in the consultation, I'd be able to make some suggestions to him mm -hmm. about how to avoid doing this. When we might be able to solve this with a letter explaining that, and then she might go, okay, and fine. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you have to go to court. It doesn't mean you have to ch make a change. And no. you should do everything possible to not blow this thing up right. to where it has to go to court, and now we're fighting and we hate each other again. A good attorney will solve this problem for you in the best way with the least amount of problem, least amount of fi friction. And that's what we do. And that's why you watch the Lawyer Dana podcast. This is the Lawyer Dana show. We'll see you in the next one.